All right, so today we are upgrading the suspension. Um, last episode we tore everything off, and now we're gonna rebuild it. Normally when you do a Mustang, there's a lot of different ways you can do it. Back in the day, people used to do the Mustang two suspension. It's a really good setup. You can get like rack and pinion, disc brakes easy, and that was before everybody made a ton of stuff for the Mustang. Nowadays you have a lot of different options. You can do a full coilover suspension system, um, Honestly, Mustangs love the coilovers because of the distance between the lower control arm and the actual top of the tower. The sky's the limit. You can put awesome stuff in there, but that's pretty costly. We are going to kind of stick with the kind of a normal suspension geometry setup. We're going to change a few things, but when I asked what people wanted to see when we originally picked up the, picked up the Mustang, people were saying make it a cool cruiser, so that's what we're going to do. Um, let me show you what we're working with first, though. First, I want to talk about the budget build aspect. If you're like a young guy or old guy, it doesn't really matter. You don't have a lot of money. Um, the Mustang's got corky suspension. If you want to deal with the problems in a cheap way, what you can get is what they call like a, Sh a Shelby drop plate. Um, they call them drop wedges. Basically what it is, is the location of the upper control arm is in a kind of a bad spot. Um, it's not great for caster and it's definitely not great for camber. So you end up with a plate like this. So pull here, pull here, as you can see. This bolts to your stock location right here. Um, you drill the holes here and then keep widening them out to the same size. Um, this one is a straight drop because it goes with the control arm I picked. The control arm does a lot of the correction, but if you have a stock control arm, you're gonna use a stock control arm, you wanna find a plate that offsets them a bit and that will take care of your caster as well as your camber. That's a huge adjustment for the Mustangs. It really wakes them up and makes them pretty awesome. This is just a simple plate. Um, you measure it out, you drill the holes, you can get these. I mean, you can buy these, obviously. It's cheaper to make them. You can go on Google. You can look it up, do the template. Um, it works. Um, I don't think there are a lot off the internet, though. I've never actually, or I don't think, I don't think you can order them pretty cheap. The point is, this is a super low bug, big upgrade for the Mustangs, or really any Ford of this era. So, the only thing we really spent a decent amount of money on, I have to be honest, is the upper control arm. I believe on the Mustangs, I've done this before, I've done it a bunch of times, the biggest bang for your buck if you're gonna do a stock style suspension on the Mustang, stock geometry style kind of, um, as in like not a Mustang 2, not a coilover, is the upper control arm. That's where everything is, that's where everything changes. Um, we got this one from Global West. They are actually local, fairly local to us, which is why I go with them, I like them. It's a pretty great design. The ball joint's in a much different spot than it would be on the stock arm. Um, the saddles are huge, obviously. This up here is huge. It's a Delrin bushing. This is an awesome piece. It is somewhat expensive. I think they run like 500 bucks for the pair. So yeah, we spent some money on that. That's the only place we really spent money on. We used a stock style control arm. These are super cheap, to be honest. This is like 30 or 40 bucks. Um, it's awesome. It's actually easier to get one of these than it is to like source out the ball joint and the bushing, put it all back together. You just get one of these. They are awesome as well. So we're using that. As far as shocks, kind of just a normal KYB shock, which is much better than was on it. Knick knack stuff. We were, using, we were using the spindle, obviously. We just shot it black and painted it. And this guy right here, just shot it, you know, sandblasted it and shot it black. And a couple of new bushings and stuff. But um, that's really it. Oh, another important thing, the saddle. This guy right here is cool. It is super awesome. It is not a stock one. It is not a polyurethane one. It is not a spherical bearing one. These guys tend to bind really bad. <clears throat> it's one of the Mustang's big problems. That's where you get a ton of the squeaks. Um, yeah, that's where a lot of it comes from. So let me show you this one, because I can. This is from Scott from Scott Drake. I'm not a huge fan overall of Scott Drake. I feel like a lot of their stuff is just kind of bone stock and they sell it for a lot more than you can get from like Moog or some of the other places. But this thing is awesome. It's a, um, this style, this style bushing. It's a synthetic bushing, but it gives you like 360 degrees. You can spin it a million times. There's no binding. It's like all the pros of like one of the bearings without any of the cons of the bearings or like I don't like to use polyurethane bushings at all on these. I think it makes them bind more. Um, I like this thing to spin freely as it goes up and down through suspension. So that's it for pretty much what we bought. Let's, oh wait, I got one more thing. Dang, I bought a lot of stuff. Springs. This is a Hotchkiss spring. 
We didn't go with the Global West Springs. Personally, I think Hotchkiss makes the best springs for this kind of application. This is a dual rate spring. You can see right here, these, these three coils are tighter than these three coils. So you get dual rates. Um, it allows you to have a nice firm suspension, kind of like really sporty feel, yet still have some comfort. It helps control body roll a bit. These things are awesome. I have you. It may look like I just threw all this together with random stuff, but I have done this exact setup before. It works really well. So yeah, let's get throwing this bad boy on. All right. So what you're gonna do is take your template, bolt it into where the original control arms were, and then take a 3/16 drill bit and drill out the uh, the other holes. All right, so we've got the 3 16th holes drilled out. We're gonna go ahead and remove the template and then slowly work our way up to this 9 16th drill bit. Yep. That's not gonna work. Back to the shitty dull drill bit. God damn. So the next step, now that we've got our holes drilled out, is we're going to take our upper control arm um, with this spacer here, and we're going to be just sliding into the holes that we've drilled out and torquing it to 80 foot-pounds. That's going to take some wiggle, I'm sure. The saddle mounts on our upper control arm are super thick, so these ones aren't going to cut it. They are pressed in. I'm going to just kind of sit it in the vise. Save that, that's a good one. Don't throw it over that. And that's it. Where's my super awesome gun? Yeah. Where is that? <laughs> uh, I think it's in the drawer. Oh, well, I'm almost done. It's like the only thing I could use. So now I got these just kind of tightened up a bit. I'm gonna to switch to the torque wrench and do these to 25 foot pounds. There we go. Cool. See this thing pivoting? Yeah. Also, this thing comes pre-greased. It uses a different kind of grease. Um, supposedly, you don't have to grease them for a couple years. I have used this set before and I never grease them, they're pretty awesome. But, I mean, some of these don't get a lot of miles, so it's hard to kind of judge that. All right, next, let's do the lower control arm. Neat. Lower control arm, putting this bad boy in. Um, putting this cool guy in. You ever notice, like, I would say the Chevys are easier to take apart. The Mustangs are easier to put back together. It's kind of my like how I feel about it. We're gonna leave this one fairly loose. This is the only one you really need to worry about leaving loose. These guys are kind of self-contained. They're not gonna bind. It'll go up and down. Um, these come pre-tightened on the top. This one isn't. You wanna get the weight on the car before you fully tighten it down. Um, I will rotate the cam where I want it to kind of get a basic, basic kind of alignment for the camber. Realistically, they'll kick it out as far as it can go, because who cares? Way better, you know, more cam just better. To an extent, you know, we're not stancing this thing. <laughs> but leave this one loose for now. Um, once we set it down, I'll give it a final tighten. Cool, let's grab the spindle. Alright, next up is our spindle, which we sandblasted and painted, and it looks awesome because we ain't buying a new one. This looks a little weird. Believe it or not, that's how it goes.
Okay, so we are reusing the tie rods on it for now, but I did get it some new boots. So, pop that guy on and put it in place. All right, now we're gonna grease everything and tighten it down. Um, these ones, the spindle nuts are like 65 foot-pounds of torque. Um, you're never gonna get it perfect because you need to get the cotter pin through it. So, you know, maybe click it up and then decide if you wanna back it off a bit or if you're close enough, slightly tighter. Um, the cotter pin's really holding it, so you just need it tight enough that it's not kind of moving up and down. So we'll do that, but I like to put the grease in it first. Usually I do it before, depending on it, but these ones have easy access to the actual grease fittings. So I actually kind of thought it'd be better on the car. So I'm gonna do that really quick. If you do put too much grease in, we usually just ooze out. Just clean it up, it's not a big deal. I'd rather really have too much than not enough. Awesome. All right, so next up is our sway bar links. Um, no big deal. These are super cheap, but you might as well replace them because they're super cheap. leave it like this I'll do the bottom later once I set it down so I can do the other side at the same time coil most of the time these are a pain but this is such a smaller coil we're not gonna have any problems we're gonna put this cool coil isolator so flat side goes up this pigtail we're gonna wrap around to the tab right here on the saddle mount Alright, so what we're using now is the jack just to keep the suspension up because it's at full droop farther than it could go when it's normally on your car. Um, the shocks and a couple other things will limit it usually. A little higher? A little more? Right there. So, that's just sitting there so I can clock the spring properly where I like it. We'll install the shock. I can put a bolt on this now and then we'll pretty much be good to be honest. That's like that's like the suspension. We have the shock left, put the bolt on that, put the cotter pins in, and then that's it. So let me grab the shock. This has to go through the top, but I wanted to show you this while I'm right here. This I got the camera set up. Taylor does, I don't. <laughs> um, we took a few inches, well, a couple inches, out of the whole suspension system. What that does though is it shrinks the distance this shock will travel. You can bottom it out can mess them up or even worse it handles like crap because let's be honest we're going to break stuff eventually so you get these spacers right here these go in between the mountain surface the shock and the shock tower You know when you watch a movie and like they're working on the car in the movie and they have like a ratchet or a wrench just somewhere randomly and you're like there's no way he's using that wrench for that job at that time. It's like my favorite thing about movies. Like I don't care if the car is inconsistent, you know, like suddenly it's got a cracked window and then it doesn't. <laughs> but when someone's like holding a wrench and you're like there's no way he used that wrench at all on that car anyway. It's like so annoying. <laughs> That's some... Oh, you're good at that, aren't we? That's some Neil deGrasse Tyson shit right there. 
Or if you do that? He's always complaining when there's like lighting doesn't make sense. Because he's like, you know, an astrophysicist or something. The guy needs to relax. Nobody notices that. We have all the suspension parts in. The suspension is greased. The only thing I actually need to do is throw the cotter pins in, which I will. Um, obviously, we can't drop it down and tighten up everything for good because we soon put brakes on this thing. So that's pretty much it for this episode of Budget Build Garage. If you like the setup, let me know. If you're wondering why we didn't do coilovers, I mean, honestly, money. And like I said earlier, a lot of people wanted to see this. They told me that in the comments they wanted to see this thing be a cruiser. This is kind of my middle ground. I can't do standard complete stock thing, but, you know, this is pretty close to it. Um, if you have any questions, you know, drop them. I'll answer them. If you want to know about the control arm um, or anything like that, how the Hotchkiss Springs, the Global West control arm, let me know. I'll answer any questions you got. Um, cool. Thanks.